Welcome to this video on how to manage risks in construction projects. Construction is inherently risky due to its complex nature and effectively managing these risks is crucial for project success. In the next three minutes, we'll explore key strategies to identify, assess, and mitigate risks in construction. One, understanding risk in construction. First, let's define what we mean by risk in construction. A risk is any uncertain event that can impact the project's objectives, whether it's budget, schedule, or quality. Common risks include site conditions, regulatory changes, labor shortages, and material delays. Two, risk identification. The first step in risk management is identification. Engage your project team early in the process. Conduct brainstorming sessions, review past projects, and utilize checklists tailored to your specific type of construction. Remember, the earlier you identify potential risks, the better prepared you'll be to handle them. Three, risk assessment. Once you have a list of potential risks, the next step is assessment. Evaluate each risk based on two criteria, the likelihood of occurrence and the potential impact on the project. Use a risk matrix to categorize risks into low, medium, and high levels. This will help you prioritize which risks require immediate attention and which can be monitored over time. Four, risk mitigation strategies. Now that you've identified and assessed the risks, it's time to develop mitigation strategies. Here are a few effective approaches. One, avoidance. Change your project plan to eliminate the risk altogether. For example, if there's a high risk of flooding at a site, consider relocating the project. Two, reduction. Implement measures to reduce the likelihood or impact of the risk. This could include using high-quality materials or investing in advanced construction technology to streamline processes. Three, transfer. Shift the risk to another party. This can be done through insurance or subcontracting. For instance, outsourcing certain tasks to specialized contractors can help transfer specific risks associated with those activities. Four, acceptance. In some cases, it may be best to accept the risk, particularly if the costs of mitigation outweigh the potential impact. However, ensure you have contingency plans in place to address any issues that may arise. Five, monitoring and review. Risk management is not a one-time activity. It requires continuous monitoring and review throughout the project lifecycle. Schedule regular risk assessment meetings to revisit and update your risk register. Encourage open communication among team members to report any new risks as they arise. In conclusion, effective risk management in construction projects involves thorough identification, assessment, and mitigation strategies, followed by continuous monitoring. By taking proactive measures, you can navigate uncertainties and enhance your project's chances of success. Thank you for watching. If you found this information helpful, please like and subscribe for more insights on construction management. Until next time, stay safe and keep building. Welcome to Innovations in Seismic Design, preparing for the big one. Today, we'll explore how engineers and architects are revolutionizing the way we design structures to withstand the forces of nature, specifically earthquakes. One, the importance of seismic design. Earthquakes can cause devastating damage, leading to loss of life and significant economic repercussions. As urban populations grow, the importance of seismic resilience becomes paramount. The primary goal of seismic design is to protect buildings, infrastructure, and most importantly, human lives during seismic events. Historically, many structures have failed to withstand earthquakes, prompting engineers to rethink their approach. Innovations in seismic design are not just enhancements, their necessities in our ever-changing world. Two, base isolation techniques. One of the most groundbreaking innovations in seismic design is base isolation. This technique involves placing a flexible bearing system between a building's foundation and its superstructure. Essentially, the building floats on these isolators, allowing it to move independently from ground motion during an earthquake. Base isolators absorb and dissipate seismic energy, significantly reducing the amount of force transferred to the structure. This innovation has been successfully implemented in various high-profile buildings, including the San Francisco City Hall and the Taipei 101. The results? Dramatic improvements in structural performance during seismic events. 
Three, damping systems. Another innovation making waves in seismic design is the use of damping systems. These systems are designed to absorb and dissipate vibrational energy. There are several types of dampers, including one, viscous dampers. These work like shock absorbers in a car, using a fluid to resist motion. Two, base damping. This technique uses devices at the base of a structure to absorb energy from seismic waves. Three, friction dampers. They absorb energy by creating friction between two surfaces. Damping systems can be retrofitted to existing buildings or incorporated into new designs, offering flexibility and adaptability in seismic resilience. Four, smart materials and technologies. The emergence of smart materials is also transforming seismic design. These materials can respond to environmental changes and adapt accordingly. For instance, shape memory alloys, SMAs, can revert to a predetermined shape after being deformed, helping structures recover after seismic activity. Moreover, advanced monitoring technologies, like sensors integrated into structures, allow for real-time data collection. Engineers can analyze how buildings perform during an earthquake, leading to better designs and improved safety standards. 5. The Future of Seismic Design As technology advances, the future of seismic design looks promising. Innovations like artificial intelligence and machine learning are enabling engineers to predict seismic behavior more accurately and optimize designs accordingly. The integration of these technologies will not only enhance safety, but also contribute to more sustainable construction practices. By using advanced materials and designs, we can reduce resource consumption and waste in the building process. In conclusion, innovations in seismic design are crucial in preparing for the big one. From base isolation and damping systems to smart materials and cutting-edge technology, these advancements are revolutionizing how we approach earthquake resilience. As we continue to innovate and adapt, we can build safer structures that protect our communities and save lives. Thank you for joining us in exploring the future of seismic design. Designing for Millennium Can we build structures that last 1,000 years? Most buildings today are designed to last 50 to 100 years. But what if we aimed for 1,000? What would it take to create a structure so durable, so resilient, that it stands the test of time for generations? In this video, we'll break down the key principles behind designing buildings that could last for a millennium. 1. The Secrets of Ancient Structures Looking back, lessons from the past. Some ancient structures like the Egyptian pyramids Roman aqueducts and medieval castles have stood for thousands of years. What did they get right? A big part of their longevity comes from materials and design simplicity. They used durable materials like stone and took advantage of natural forms, like arches and domes, which distribute weight evenly and resist decay over time. But it's not just about copying the past. We need to adapt these lessons for modern times. 2. Material Science and Durability Choosing the right materials. To build for 1,000 years, you need to select materials that can withstand the elements. While stone and brick have lasted centuries, modern engineers also turn to materials like ultra-high-performance concrete, UHPC, which is far stronger and more resistant to cracking than regular concrete. Advances in material science, like self-healing concrete and carbon fiber reinforcements, are designed to endure extreme weather and resist corrosion, ensuring long-term structural integrity. 3. Climate Considerations and Adaptability Designing for a Changing World Climate change is an essential factor in designing long-lasting buildings. Extreme weather, rising sea levels, and temperature shifts can compromise structures. To ensure a 1,000-year lifespan, buildings must adapt. This means using resilient designs that account for flooding, extreme winds, and even earthquakes. Elevating structures, using sloping surfaces for water drainage, and building in flexibility for future technologies are all part of this sustainable approach. 4. Simplicity and Maintenance Simplicity and Maintenance – The Key to Longevity a crucial aspect of longevity is simplicity. Complex systems often break down faster. By sticking to simple, proven designs, maintenance can be minimized. Regular upkeep is essential for any structure, 
but designing with accessibility in mind ensures that future generations can easily repair and maintain buildings, even if technology changes. Building for the next millennium. Designing buildings that last 1,000 years requires a perfect blend of ancient wisdom and cutting-edge technology. It's about selecting durable materials, anticipating future environmental challenges, and ensuring ease of maintenance. While it's ambitious, creating structures that stand for a millennium isn't impossible. It's the ultimate legacy in engineering, building something that lasts for centuries to come. Subscribe to Blueprint to Reality for more deep dives into innovative structural design.